Hello everybody, and welcome back to Elden Ring. And today, I was thinking that I would run on through to the other side. By that I mean we're going to advance past this gate that we've been dilly-dallying at for so long. Past this absolute disaster. Now, it's hard to tell because I don't have a bow to zoom in with, but there's somewhere around four archers and two soldiers and a giant up there. So I'm going to do what's called a pro-gamer move and just run past them. <laughs> they expect you to stop at this item that I just picked up and go, ooh, piece of candy. Then you sit there and pick it up, and if you heard that, that giant just tried to drop down on my head, and I ain't having it. So, you know, since I'm a pro gamer, I just, I just ran past them. Now, you might think, oh, this is one of those cheeky speedrunner strats, but the thing is, this game is full of this kind of stuff. It is such a big game that if you stop to kill and deal with every single instance of what the oh right the pack of wolves i wasn't sure if this was a modded thing or a, this is definitely a vanilla instance then just run around on my horse and randomly swing at them until they all die i guess like this <laughs> when you're on the back of the horse oh i should probably explain this i got a whistle from that lady at the the first bonfire in the previous episode i <laughs> just equipped it without even thinking I'm trying to be consistent in describing the things that are happening because I skip cutscenes, so in turn I'm gonna have to explain things. But in the last episode, we stopped at a site of grace. We touched some grass. A lady came over and gave us this whistle that summons this funny looking dog that we can ride around on. And this funny looking goat, dog, horse thing is named Torrent. Now, when you're on the back of Torrent, you can hit L1 to swing your sword on the left side. You can do a little three hit combo like this and then it stops for a moment. Or you can do a heavy attack which can be charged or not charged. You should probably never use this, it's rarely ever good to use. And you can hit R1 to do the same thing but on the right side. And you can interchange them so I can go right, left, left, right, etc, etc. Nothing. Let's keep progressing. We have some grass to touch. Go outside. Say hello to your family. Breathe fresh air. I jump up here. Can't see a shiny and not pick it up. That's a lie. We'll probably be doing that at some point. Let's go ahead and interact with this lady. Just curl up on the floor. She gives us some pretty interesting things. And I'm not at all going to sit here and listen to her exposition. I don't care. If you need something killed, point me in its direction. Until then, I'm not interested in anything you have to say. Except for that, that's free. What she just gave me is called a spirit ash, I believe. Yeah, spirit ash. Yeah, she's still running her mouth, isn't she? Are we done? Have we exhausted your dialogue? I have to do this with most of the NPCs because that's how you get them to give you things. That's just how it works. And what I just got is called a Spirit Ash. And eventually, we will be using those. By eventually, I mean like right now. Hold on. Now that I have that, first off, we picked up a golden seed. Let's go ahead and use it to get another flask. Now we have six of the healing flasks. Hooray. That's a lot. But now that we've done that, we can hit select to open our map. And these are all of the sites of grace that we have interacted with. One of them is this Church of Ella. What? Ella? I don't know who the hell Ella is, but uh, she's got a church. And that's where we saw that first merchant. We're going to travel back here. Because after you get your first spirit ash, you'll notice that this area is forced into nighttime. And there's this unusual puppet thing lady who speaks in a super breathy manner and when this game came out basically sweeped all of rule 34 if you interact with her she'll give you this spirit calling bell and lone wolf ashes which really aren't that bad and then you chat with her a bunch and then she disappears after giving you things for free that happens a lot in this game you talk to people and they're like ah oh, you're the chosen one and then they give you stuff i love it free stuff everyone loves free stuff but now that we've got those Going to walk out here. I should be able to summon out here, right? I think so. No? Hold on. So what these do is they actually summon what they are. <laughs> so if I equip these lone wolf ashes and I run into a place where I can summon things here, let's go back to this gate real quick. I know I can summon things here. And we're back. Okay, if you look at the left side of my screen, above my square off ability, there's a little purple gate icon or door. I I don't know. Looks like like a door or something, but that means that I can summon here. Now, when you can summon, you'll rarely do it in these open fields because the best place to do it is when you're fighting some bosses. Not all of them can have summons, I don't think. But we'll go ahead and show an example of what that looks like here. I'm going to summon these lone wolves next to the shield boy, and we'll see how well they do against him. Good doggy doggies, go murder. Um, go dog, go. I guess I can walk right through them. That's neat. No, I can't. Never mind. Okay, I guess they won't aggress until I piss this guy off. So, hey, buddy, hi. Look at me. Oh, there they go. They're a barking, and now they're attacking. 
Well, he's got a shield up, so they're doing heavily reduced damage. One damage, in fact. There we go. Now, they don't do amazing damage, but they're still pretty good, all things considered. Because, you know, I'm not doing anything. I'm just standing here, just kind of drooling, letting them do all the work for me. Pretty nice. So these are insanely useful as a tool, these spirit ashes, for everybody at every stage of gameplay and skill level in the game. But for people who are just starting out, like if you're passing this game off to your freaking niece or nephew or something, get them the spirit ashes first and just tell them to summon those. Maybe install a mod that makes them stronger. Because that is the best way to handle a lot of these situations, is to just panic and summon some of those. We could try it against the next boss that we're going to be fighting, which we'll go ahead and do that now. We're going to be running past more things. Oh, I know, for shame, skipping parts of the game. Bars. But there is a reason for doing so. We are, after all, trying to beat the game within a certain time frame. More bars. Because the entire point of this series is to prep ourselves for Shadow of the Erd Tree. I'd like to be able to record that the first time I play through it, instead of having you guys dragged along on a game that, because that's basically going to be an entire game, it's not just a DLC, but having you guys dragged along for an entire game that I've already played. Now there is a thing up here, a weird dung beetle type bug, that we definitely want to beat the crap out of, because it has a really nice skill on it. This, Ash of War Wild Strikes. Now we'll cover what that does after we run through this area. This is absolutely a trifling bunch of enemies. I suggest just running through. Now you could kill them and handle them the normal way. Let's go ahead and dismount the horse if you wanted to. But personally, I don't suggest it. It's just not worth all of the time and effort. Now we have some grass inside this little tunnel. Not sure how that works, but we'll interact before that guy stabs us in our booty cheeks. There we go. Nice and safe. We have a level up too. I'll put that into strength. We just need one more point to equip that brass shield. Mm, brass. But we're going to take our long sword and equip storm strike. Wait, I got wild strikes, didn't I? What's happening? Did I? Let me check again. Inventory. Ashes of war. I have wild strikes. Curved swords and great swords. Interesting. I thought we could put that on normal swords too. Well, I still have a great sword. I picked this up from that chest back in that little encampment. So we can't use the wild strikes on this. Huh. Weird. Maybe I've been playing with too many mods. I thought you could equip that on pretty much anything. But eventually, actually when we get 16 strength, we'll be able to wield this along with the shield. We might just do that. You can put it on a great sword and it's pretty beefy. We can still do it even though we can't effectively wield the weapon can if we two-hand it. You're considered to have 50% more of your strength stat when you are two-handing a weapon. So if I have 10 strength and I two-hand my weapon, I'm considered to have 15 strength. That's why you can wield some weapons that are technically higher strength requirement, which is pretty neat. All right, let's go ahead and equip this and at least give a little display of what wild strikes looks like. And this is a very quick attack speed for a heavy weapon. You have a little bit of poise while using it too. And it takes, what, like maybe one or two FP? That's your mana, your magic. They call it FP instead of MP in this. They just want it to be a little different. It takes very little stamina, and it takes virtually no FP to do this. This is insanely good if you're farming certain creatures for levels and runes, etc. But that's not what we're doing right now. So we're going to hit this for no reason. I just wanted to get my FP back, even though I wasn't really going to use it. Uh, we picked up a straight sword from those enemies at the camp, and it's just a little bit stronger than our current one, so we'll equip that. But we're going to go ahead and come up here and fight ourselves. Whoa. Well, that was certainly something. I just got near the boss door and immediately crashed. I think that's only happened to me once before, and it was while I was playing a modded game. I figured that was a mod issue. But, whatever, we'll get right back to it. I crashed after walking right past here, and it's not happening again. Good. Wonderful. Anyways, still have this great sword equipped. Let's remove that. But anyways, let's go ahead and fight ourselves a boss. It's a pretty nice scenery. That's right, Margaret. But let's go ahead and fight. Enough words. Words are cheap. Parried. Parried. <laughs> you can kind of tell that I played this game a bit. It's been over a year, but I still more or less know what I'm doing with this. Parry? No, that's a partial. Crap. Well, he's going to jump away soon. I don't like the daggers. Just strafe this one. Margie is one of my favorite bosses, mostly because I've been forced to fight him a lot. Oh, that's another partial parry, of course. 
Now, if you're fighting him yourself, I would suggest you strafe with your shield up and just get the big, obvious openings. Me, I'm going to parry him <laughs> because I like parrying him. It's what I see to be a part of the entertainment in this part of the game. Oh, crap. I'm letting him hit me a lot. Don't throw things at me. That's rude, Margie. Yeah, you're going to stab the ground aggressively. You angry that I keep parrying you? He's getting a little hammery. Well, while you do that, I'm going to summon my wolves. No, I can't. I don't have enough FP. Ouch. Guess you don't roll that way against that one. It's been a minute. Don't, don't do it. It's not worth it, Margie. Come on, buddy. There you go. Big slam attack. Look at you getting all aggressive. Now we can just strafe this one. Get him in the back. Ooh, crap. Meant to roll toward the hammer there. But I missed it. Relax, Margarine. It's okay. Let's go ahead and back up and use some good old Estus. I mean, flasks. Whatever. Dodge, dodge, you big old hammer. Bring it on. Okay, what's next? God, I hate this attack. I always roll the wrong way. It's some weird muscle memory built into me. I guess we'll take some more Estus. Swing it, buddy. Oh, that's not the one. I'll just block that. Why not? And strafe this one. Charge up a heavy attack, because we can. Come on. Let's go, buddy. No, partial again? Really, more partials. Nope, not hammer time. Again, more partials. This is weird. Maybe I built up some muscle memory and during one of the mods where the timing was different. I suppose we'll have to take it a little bit more seriously from here on. Yep, yep. And then you come in with the hammer? No, no hammer, just knives. Rude gonna throw things at me come on margie let's go all right do this one give you a little charge attack in the booty oops <laughs> forgot that damn dagger technically does elemental damage holy or lightning or whatever it does all right that was the warm-up <laughs> i say now didn't say that at the beginning doesn't count unless you call the shot beforehand but i didn't say that i was gonna beat him first try it's been over a year and i kept trying to parry for no good reason this time we'll go in Without crashing, wonderful. And we'll send the doggies at him. See how that goes. Come on, Margie. Yeah, I'm gonna run right past you. Yep, yep, yep. Some pretty neat tricks against some of the bosses if you unlock your camera. You can sometimes run right under them or around them. Being locked on to a boss isn't always a good thing. Damn, if you look at my wolves, they're already getting wasted by him. <laughs> Ripping spaghetti doggos. You're done for. Well, I guess I could try to sneak some attacks in while they're still alive. I don't usually like fighting bosses when there's more creatures with me. Just because it adds a lot of chaos to the mix. Like, I have no idea what he's going to do. So I try to keep my distance, like this. It's a pretty long stick, Margie. Just block everything. No? Oh, a nice little extra swoop if I don't dodge that? Now we do. We're sciencing. Just me and the one dog. Funny that the Ash of War is called Lone Wolves, because if they're lone, why are there multiple of them? Kind of cheating the system with that one, huh? Charging up. Parried. Parried? No. Still no parry? Interesting. I know those timings. I've done it many, many times. Alright, Margie, I'm going to walk right under you. Like this. <laughs> There's a parry. That's what we like to see. See if we can get a nice little charge attack in here. Parry again. Parry again. There we go. We've started the cycle. Although I think he's about to whip his hammer out. Absolute pervert. Roll away from that and through here. No, no parry that time. And damn. Well, let's chug. Hammer time. Nope, not this time. Come on, Margie. So he's always got those extra singular sneak attacks at the end of everything. Ouch, ouch, okie dokie, running away. And I'm gonna chug. Swing at me, nerd. There we go, parry time. Parry again. Easy peasy. Get another heavy attack on the way up. Yeah, charging up, bud. Adorable. Do it again. Do it again, I dare you. Come on, Margaret. I think I should be able to just top him off here. Charge attack. Oop, roll through that. Light attack. Yep, GG's. You want a rematch? I'm down. I'm starting to figure it out again. Well, we got the talisman pouch. 
That's pretty nice. And a bunch of souls. A little upset that I died the first time. Against margarine of all things. It's not even a real butter. Yeah, I don't need any quarters. There's no more arcades. Those things have gone out of business, Margie. Well, let's go ahead and get these Sights of Grace. And I believe... I don't know why I'm zooming out on the map. I believe I should be able to rest to this and then talk to Melinda. Yup, yup, that's, that's a lot of words that you're using right there. I'm sorry, I have more eyes than IQ, so I really can't keep up with everything that you're saying. Oh my god. Absolute perversion. I can't believe... Dude, this should be rated 18+. plus. Were they just holding hands? Uncensored. Ridiculous. I can't believe it. How can they allow these kind of things and or entertainment these days? Well, I'm here at the round table. So if you open your map when you're at this point in the game, this is why I zoomed out all the way, I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Trying to understand my own thought process when I do things. This is where I was. The Stormvale main gate. Now if we zoom all the way out, this is a new portion of the map that we can always go to. This is kind of like our little home, our main hub. And you're gonna come here a lot, most likely, during a playthrough if you end up playing the game. If not, well, you're gonna see me do it. You and I, we're gonna see this place a lot. You can do a lot of things here. You can upgrade your weapons. You can buy stuff. You can talk to people who don't like you because nobody likes you in this game. Like this guy. Don't worry, we don't like him either. You have statues trying to assert their dominance in a failed T-pose. But I would say our primary goal here, right now at least, is to buy a bow. Actually, I want a ranged weapon. Any ranged weapon will do. This is the only one that I know of in close proximity. So it's ours now. Thanks. I appreciate that. We're going to take that and, I guess, we'll buy these stone sword keys. Oh, they're expensive. Damn. Maybe we won't. We'll hold out until we need stone sword keys. Well, actually, will we? No. No, we won't. We're going to buy two of them. Goodbye, souls. Runes. Money. Whatever. Let's talk to this guy. Just getting all edgy here. Are oh, you? Yeah. Are oh, you? Free emote. Free stuff. We love free stuff here. To wrap up all the things that we actually have to do here, those things mostly consist of speaking to this guy. This is the blacksmith. I don't know his name. Okay, it's in the upper left there. Master Hugh Hwig. So Master Huggy here, he strengthens our weapons. He makes them stronger. And because we were forced to farm those damn knights for almost an hour straight, we got a lot of smithing stones. Now we're not going to use them right now. Our goal is actually to get A, a rapier, or B, a spear to attack from behind our shield. Because it's cool that you can do that, and it's also kind of broken. Not really. It's fairly balanced, because you lose stamina and you have to manage it and be patient. It's about patience. Luckily for you... You'll get to see the edited version, where there will be no time with me waiting there with my shield up for the enemies to attack. It's just the attacks. Should we trade in our souls for anything? No, we don't need to. Alright, we don't need to interact with anyone here. We're done. But we unlocked the area so we can always come back. That's more or less what our goal was, but we had to either A, lose to Margi, or B, fail to spread the margarine in that boss fight in order to unlock this place. We did both. We died to Margie, and then Margie died to us, which is great. Now we've got a couple caves and such that we could go through here, and there's at least one that I would like to do. So we're going to head back to this beginning area, just for a little bit. But we're going to be heading down into a cave. A happy, happy little cave. With death in sinew. And rocks. Lots of rocks. We are on the other side of this encampment where that gate was, where I just kind of skipped a portion of the game, basically. Uh, let's see, we bought a bow. Can we even use it? No, I need more dexterity. Why didn't I think about that? So we need one more point in strength and one more point in dexterity. That's where our runes are going to go from here on out. How much does it take for a level? We could do one. Wait, we could do what? Eh, I'll say we can handle not having the upgraded shield for now, but I'd like to have full access to the bow. Whether I remember to use it or not is an entirely different story. Put that one point into dexterity, and then wait for that last point to strength, and then we go right back into vigor, forever, until we die, several times. And then we'll rethink our strategy. So, now we have a bow, and... do I have any arrows? We have a bow, but no arrows. How appropriate. However, we can, in fact, make arrows, which we're gonna do. There's no other use to the animal bones, at least for now. So there we go. We have about 20 bone arrows. And I'd like to have more, but for now, our objective is to kill these birds. Why, you might ask? Well, it's because they drop flight pinions, which will allow us to make more arrows later on down the road. And we might, at some point, have to use some of those. Let's go ahead and walk off this cliff here. That's definitely a small enough fall that we won't really die from it. Run around hugging this wall, so nothing gets a little too aggressive. There's a crab somewhere in there. I don't want to touch it. And... 
Here we are, we're at the cave entrance. But instead of going down on this thing, we never ever use those. Am I heavy rolling? I am, take the bow off. You know, I get distracted too easily. We got a talisman pouch from spreading the margarine and because of that, we have another accessory slot. Now we don't have any good accessories yet. Eventually we will, but it unlocked that, which is important. Later on, we'll be enjoying the crap out of those accessory slots. Anyways, whenever you see these elevators here, you do not go down them, you look down the sides and look for a different path, an alternative path. Because if you fall down the proper side, like I just did, you can oftentimes find yourself some sneaky, sneaky little loot. And I think I might be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure that every single one of these caves with an elevator like this also has an alternate path down the side. They might not always have loot, but they always have an alternate path. I haven't been through every single dungeon in this game, but I have been damn close, I think. Whether or not I remember all of them when I come across them is a different story, because I have the memory of a goldfish, which might be an insult to goldfish. But we have made our way to the bottom of the cave. Now, we interact with this lever to get the elevator to come down to us. Sadly, we can't do weird parkour to go up out of the cave, but we can do it to come down. Boom. Ladder. I mean elevator. I mean whatever. Let's go ahead and pick a fight. To rank with this thing. Let's go ahead and pick a fight with this entire cave. Now there's some pretty interesting guys in here. These guys are made of stone, which means that slashy slashy stabby cutty weapons like my sword are not very good against them. You can still use them, but you're going to want to two hand them so that you don't bounce off of them. I'll show what that looks like. If I hit this guy, I'll bounce off of him. But if I two hand it, I don't bounce. Instead, I get hit. If you're two handing a weapon, you don't bounce off of things, which is of course good. However, I don't think I can stagger him with a jump attack. Oh, I can. Surprising. Heavy attack works too. All right, I guess I just do enough damage or the weapon is heavy enough. Normally it doesn't work like that. But because of that, using the sword and board with the sword in a single hand strategy doesn't work very well against these. However, if you are following through in any kind of playthrough of your own or if you come across these guys and you need smithing stones, these guys give them. Specifically the ones in these caves, this cave I mean, they give smithing stone one, which allows for the first tier of upgrades, which is pretty nice. The fact that that's in their drop pool, and it's pretty common. I think it's a little more common than those knights that I was fighting. Ouch. Just keep jump attacking this guy, I guess. Jump attack, then back up, rinse, repeat. Oh, that's something that just happened. Camera fighting back. Let's go ahead and roll away. I'm so used to fighting these guys with magic that it is a little confusing to be up in their face. I also don't normally just lunge at them like I did there. Whoopsie, paying a price. Let's go and do a nice charged attack on this guy, and a second one. There you go, staggered. See what I mean? Charged attacks in the back are better than just doing a back attack. You know, when it comes to games like this, I'm a bit of a penny pincher, so I would like to make sure that when I clear this first room, I don't lose any health. Just in case when I come across the boss, I need that Estus. Now, I won't always do this, but in these early stages, I probably will. Part of the health that I lost there was in my attempt to display what happens when you don't two-hand your weapon against these guys. So, we're just counteracting that real quick. This guy's big dead. Now we want to take this guy out. Sadly, I think I am just going to have to mono e mono him. So we'll stick with jumping attacks again. Maybe I can hit him with a heavy attack instead? Oh yeah, that's staggering him. It's a little slow, though. Another heavy attack, and he's done for. Same two charged heavy attacks on the back of this guy into a riposte. And you have yourself a free kill. Mmm, murder. Now let's go ahead and get this guy over here. You don't even have to stealth with these guys because, well, they're a little preoccupied with digging holes and such. Go ahead and get them two charged attacks into a riposte. It's the ideal way to take them out, it seems. So there's that, and then there's one more down over in this corner. Let's go ahead and just charge attack him too. Like this, and one more. Yep, he didn't have time to attack. Good. That could have sucked. Yep, and now we have rats. This would have been a good time to have a rapier. Very good time. Ouch. Do not underestimate the rats in this game, especially in groups. Well, really only in groups. Feel free to underestimate singular rats. They don't do that much damage per hit. However, they attack very quickly suddenly and in groups they just i swear the ai is designed with ganking in mind because they'll attack out of sync in such a way that you'll just get stun locked aggressively and lose most of your health before you can guard again i'm okay with losing a bit of health to the rats so i'll go ahead and chug one of my flasks my 
crimson tears to get my health back. And we have ourselves another elevator. We'll be going down the left side again. Like this. Probably all the way. Yeah, we'll go all the way. Jump right across here, and then one more layer down. You can take a surprising amount of fall height before actually losing health in this game. Unlike the previous Dark Souls, where stepping up onto an elevated rock could result in your death. Luckily, we've evolved from those days. Developed a little bit of leg muscle. Stop skipping leg day. That is a dog. So... This is where we make use of the bow to get this dog's attention. We're going to unequip this. There we go. After unequipping the accessory, I can now equip the bow just fine with my armor without being heavy. So I can still do a medium roll, which means I'm not slow. I'm getting lots of iframes and, well, other good things. We'll go ahead and use our mighty shot here. That's the Ash of War for the bow. And try to top this dog off in one shot. Nope, not working. Try a second shot. There we go. Dead doggo. Now... Yep, that's right, it pissed off this other dog, which will let attack us on our shield, and then kill it before it can do anything too crazy. And now we just gotta take out the minor man in between his attacks, then we roll away, jump in again, roll away. It's the easy way to handle them. Eventually you will break their poise, and that basically signifies the end of the fight, because they take damage that is seemingly unscaled when you repost them. Like, it's not reduced by their high defense. Now let's figure out what this dog is guarding. Large glitz stone scrap hmm we might use that in the upcoming boss fight honestly that is an item where if you use it on your hot bar oop that was a light attack whoopsie almost took a hit for that mistake but the glint stone scrap can be used on your hot bar your character will sort of like pop it in his hand like an unusual magical stone pimple and it will summon little magic orbs that will at some point fly toward the boss after delaying in the air a little bit sorry not the boss the enemy they will fly toward the enemy and then you can mercolate them. If you use multiple of them, it's actually pretty buff. Let's go ahead and roll down here. Nice little sneaky area. We have ourselves the next batch of nerds. We have one to the left there, which we're going to ignore. We're going to come in here to the right first. This guy walking around, making his way downtown. Let's go ahead and just hit him with a jumping attack. Yep. Strafe around so that nothing can come up behind us. Here we go. The end. Jump attacks do a lot of poise damage. So if you have a tough durable enemy like this that you want to get unpoised or staggered the best way is usually through jump attacks because you also have mobility while using them because you can jump away and land with a heavy attack if i just heavy attack here well i'm heavy attacking and it takes a while before i can move i'm heavy attacking and then one yeah almost half a second before you can move but if i wanted to i could jump back this way and then heavy attack toward the opponent and just it takes extra stamina to do this kind of maneuver but you can jump away from enemies while queuing up a heavy attack to fall with you might have heard of these conversations before but plenty of players just tend to say that jump attacks are the strongest thing in this game now i think i got this thing's attention and i would like to lure it away from that other one on the side yep see he knows i'm here because he's veering here we go oh crap the other one did get pissed off and now that one's breathing fire at me with his weird lantern thing well start doing the jump attack strings i guess crap they're grouping together don't throw that at me that's rude more jump attacks it looks like the other one is just kind of pretending I'm not here, I guess. He's letting me 1v1 this nerd. What a homie. Don't you dare try to trap me in that explosion. That is rude, my dude. Bars. Stabbed him in the ass. Oop. He was still invincible from getting up. Don't like that. And there we go. Fight over. When you're playing this game, you want to optimally avoid any and all instances where you're forced to fight more than one enemy at a time because you're adding an insane amount of variability to the situation. With enough patience, like what I did there, you can avoid taking damage, but don't bank on that happening if you're going to be pissing off crowds all the time. It's very easy to get unlucky and just get destroyed by enemies that you've never had a hard time with before. Not until you get to the truly ludicrous levels, like triple digits in this game, should you consider getting cocky enough to just run into rooms full of enemies swinging aggressively. And even then, you only do that if you're a warrior like this particular class, because you're a tanky boys boy. Let's go ahead and grab these stones down here, falling down this nice secret path. And this right here is the door to the boss room. We're hoping that this doesn't turn out like Margie, the good old margarine, in the sense that we don't have to die to him once before figuring out what to do. I think I should be able to handle this, as this guy's really like a half boss. Not really a boss, but kind of a boss. We'll see as we move along. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'll be removing 
the flask of cerulean tears because i don't use magic this recovers your blue stuff from my hot bar and i will add in this large glintstone scrap now this takes up a very minute amount of fp to use but i want to use it against this boss because he's made of stone and he takes a lot of damage from magic so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna step in and immediately just start proccing those as quickly and aggressively as we can man this guy opens this door super slow take a few steps forward and here we go there's three pops, four pops, and here comes number five. Oh, here we go. He's immediately staggered. Look at his health just draining. Oh, man, that's great. Try to sneak in some attacks, get a repost here. <laughs> this isn't even a fight. Wow, okay. I guess that's why they give you those glintstone scraps halfway through the dungeon. I th That wasn't even a fight. I've never had such an easy time with that boss before. Any boss, really. I mean, I'm, I'm not even a sorcerer, but that felt like being a sorcerer. You should, you should. <laughs> At least in the earlier games, you usually can't do it quite that easily. Usually you still have to roll around and pew pew some with your staff. But that was, that was disgusting. I need more of those. Glintstone scraps. I think those were the large ones. That's why there's only five. Only downside is if I'd failed that fight after using them, I wouldn't have them for the next attempt, which is too bad, really. But damn, that was just aggressively simple. Gonna have to do that again at some point. Absolutely gonna have to do that again. You know what? I think we can sneak in one more boss fight. One more. Since it seems to be a bossing kind of episode. First things first, let's use our runes before we accidentally lose them. Use it before you lose it. Okay, put that one point into strength, and that means that we can move on to the brass shield, which, of course, is a great shield. And I will be moving on to it, but this next boss, I really enjoy parrying, so I'm going to. And I can't do that with a brass shield because it doesn't actually have a skill. Yeah, those tornado wolves or whatever are coming down from the sky. I'm busy. They're gonna have to wait. Just had to kill a goat as I was passing by. I don't know why. I just get urges. There's another one. Damn things. They're just littering the grass. Get off my lawn. These little rune sentinel things, these stone boys, stone worms, tend to surround things like this. This is an Everjail. Evergowl? I call it an Everjail. Get over it. <laughs> it's, there's plenty of arguments about the pronunciation about these, or for these, whatever. We're gonna go ahead and fight the boss in here. He is technically quite strong, but he's also quite parryable, so we're gonna try that and see how it goes. Now that little ground stomp that he does there has to be rolled. You can't parry it. You can block it, but it takes a absolute boatload of your stamina. That right there. The rest of this, however, is very easy to... How did I partial parry if he didn't even hit me? Man, that's dumb. Nice little shield charge. That's very punishable. What? That parry didn't work? Bull. That one didn't work? Double bull. Okay, let's heal up. Recoup. <laughs> Gain some distance. Chug and roll. Oh, I guess you just can't parry when he's two-handing like that. I think. No promises. Really? That one's very parryable. There we go. Now it's working. I think I'm just used to the buckler timing. That could be it. You know, you do your thing. I have to chug again due to my errors. Oh, oh goodness. Okay, no more chugging. I get it. Okay, swing at me, nerd. Let's go. Parry. Easy peasy. Squeezy lemons. Stab him. Really? That didn't work? Again, that didn't work. It seems like there's... If you don't parry from a specific point or angle, you oftentimes just get a partial parry, which is not cool. Roll here, and then he has two attacks. Yep. Wait, that reached? Wow. Oh, don't do it! Oh, man. <laughs> now I'm out of everything. All right. See if we can clutch it out with one HP in a dream. Parry. That's what you do when you're at one HP, right? You parry? I think that's how it works. Hit him with a little... Light attack, parry again. That's right, that's the easiest one to parry. It's very much like, oh, he's doing it, and then he just hit the button. <laughs> just keep doing it. That works for me, bud. I'm okay with just looping this over and over. Let's go ahead and just get a normal light attack in. Really? Oh. Well, we were doing all right. Wasn't too terrible, though. Have to get my sea legs back. Remember exactly what the parry timings are in this game. Because it's variable based on the size of your shield. And if you're used to using the buckler against certain enemies, trying to switch off to a medium shield, which has a smaller parry window, can be a bit daunting. Having a stricter parry window is a minor inconvenience that is applied to medium shields. That makes sense, more or less, because the medium shields also typically 
have 100% physical resistance. So they'll block 100% physical damage that's thrown at you. Your souls drop outside of the Ever Jail when you die in them, which is quite convenient. If I die too many times, eventually I will forget to pick them up. Luckily there's not too many of them. Here comes attempt number two. Let's see how it goes. He's probably got a lunge, yep. Then this part, it's one of the easier bits to deal with. Really, that didn't parry. Again, what is the parry timing? <laughs> Trying to heal against this guy is very difficult unless you sprint away like this. Alright, let's try this. Hit him on the shield. That usually forces him to take action. Usually. Really? That messed up the timing. I really am just too used to the buckler against him, I guess. Maybe I'll have to stick with rolling instead. Let's go ahead and get this done. He's gonna charge at me. Figured. Oop, that was not the parry button. <laughs> oh, you can usually just strafe that one. wonder why I couldn't. There we go. I guess I have to go later? No, earlier? Let's do this. Parry that, really? Again. Oh, that entire thing just stunlocked me. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Since when? I guess I just took too much stamina damage? Very interesting. Okay, we'll give a third attempt, because that was rather quick. These games tend to get quite a bit more entertaining when you've taken long breaks like this because the bosses suddenly have more challenge to them or some of their challenges brought back. When you've played over 600 hours, it tends to get a bit almost boring. Not necessarily, but it's a bit tedious. You're hopeful for whenever mods drop that overhaul the game and make things difficult or change how the enemy AI works. And for me, my brain is a bit jumbled when playing vanilla because I played the Ascended mod, the Reborn mod, the Shattered mod, any any overhaul mod you can think of, I played the crap out of them. A ludicrous amount of mods. Stopping to think about it, I think vanilla is what I played the least of. Here goes attempt number three. We'll be a little bit more serious about it this time. Maybe avoid the parrying. Even though it is so nice having it sped up. Oh yeah, okay, we'll stop. Ouch, that really reached. It's really hard to understand the depth of some enemies' attacks. Chug twice. We'll just stick with dodging from here on out. The only downside is that this longsword has a crappy rolling attack. Which is basically where we're going to be getting most of our damage. You have to really delay it for you to get a proper angle on it like this. This guy really is quite simple. He's just a bit of a stat stick. A healthy boy. No stompies for you. I don't care how upset you are. Gotta keep doing the shield charge. Makes it easier for me. Well, until I overextend an attack twice. Wow, he's not usually that aggressive. Wow, oh, oh, okay, okay. If you bounce off his shield at the wrong time during that, that was just bad luck. Okay, we should have time to double heal, and that will just stop overextending and start taking it a bit more seriously. Nice little heavy attack there. Jump over that, dodge this. Dodge again. Wow, that hit me? Really? Get a couple hits in here. Whenever we can, get it. Might as well. What? Okay, I'll have to start jumping that. Take a moment to heal. Oh man, it's like you knew I was going to attack. Really? I feel like that normally doesn't have such a long lingering hitbox. Alright, one more try. <laughs> the Souls player in me just can't accept failing to kill this guy. I don't know where to get the buckler, but that would definitely help. I usually have a very specific way that I take him on. Yes, yes, the dogs yet again. This is what, the fourth attempt? Alright, we're done after this one. Absolutely done. No need to overextend. Oftentimes, if you're having a hard time with the Dark Souls boss, or a from soft boss, I should say, since it's not just Dark Souls anymore. But one of the things that you should do if you're having a hard time with one of them is take a break. Step away from the game. Oftentimes, you just need a bit of a mental reset. Now, I think that I would like to try using two swords. Because the rolling attack should be, yes, superior. It's got a nice little side swipe to it. Might increase my damage, although I'll have to manage my stamina a bit better. I don't plan on blocking him much, because I know how to dodge his moves most of the time. Now, the damage isn't that much better, but it's something. Yeah, yeah, you can basically 180 with that rolling attack, which is nice. Very nice. Yeah, this is going to be much smoother. Gotta remember to jump over that one instead. 
Ooh. Get two attacks in when he does the little double spin. Not too bad. Here comes the double spin again. There we go. One, two. Yep, yeah, it's not bad. Come on, buddy. Stop strafing. Here comes the stab every time. Ooh, overextended. Getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and sprint away and heal up. Chug two and get back to it. Come on, buddy. Swing at me already. Let's get this going. Just try not to overextend one hit per instance. It's probably the best bet. Even that was a bit much. Here comes the stab again. I think the string stops after the stab. And here he comes to phase two, where he starts doing this little diving thing. And the tail swipe. That's going to keep clipping me. It has a very fast startup like that. A bit difficult to deal with. Sprint away. Chug once. Just keep an eye out for that tail swipe. Is that ground stomp again? That's not reaching me. Neither is that. There it is. The hitbox lingers before, or the hitbox appears for that, before the attack even starts to move. Just making contact with the tail is enough to hurt most of the time. Let's get that double sweep. No? Fine. I see how it is. See, right there. I touched the tail and I took damage, but it wasn't swinging yet. Let's go ahead and roll through this and chug a bit. Get two in. Oh, I was ready for it that time. Dodge, let's get that double spin. One, two. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Get two hits in. Crap, can't do that when he's got the tail. Comes out too fast. Come on, buddy. Gonna need you to get a little bit more aggressive. Get a hit in here. Roll immediately because tail. Yeah, there goes tail again. I'm starting to figure out when he uses it. Just a little bit. Oh, that's the big one. Sneak a hit in there. Yeah, let's get that double sweep. Nice. Two hits. Roll. Wonderful. We're getting somewhere. Get that double sweep. Try to get two hits in. Watch out for the tail. No tail. Good. Oh, there's tail. All right, run away. Get our last Estus in. Get away from these trees. Here comes the tail again. Sneak a hit in. Roll through that Superman attack. And this crap. Come on, buddy. Let's go. You ready for tail? Nope, not tail. Sweep. Weird. Get a hit in there. Oh, god damn it! I hate that quick one. Yeah, here comes a charge. Do this. Get ready for a tail swipe. Nope. Again, he's... I don't know. His, his AI is just mixing it up, I guess. Oh, I gotta roll in toward that so I can get some damage from it. Here comes the sweep again. Swoop. <laughs> roll through this. This is at least a bit of free damage, which is nice. And I guess tail? No tail. Interesting. Nobody here stab then tail, right? Yep. Oh, man. Okay, so you can't roll in and attack there, because during the recovery of your attack, he will tail swipe. All right, final try. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a sour loser. When it comes to Dark Souls games, I just, I don't know. I enjoy this process. It's not about beating the boss, per se, it's about learning how to beat the boss. And because it's been so long, I don't remember everything that this guy does. You only fight him a handful of times throughout the game. Unlike Margie, good god, I've fought Margie so many times. I actually have a save file that's set up specifically at the beginning level, right where we just fought him in the, in the earlier bit of this episode, and I just fight him randomly for fun sometimes. I don't know, I just, I, I like the boss fights in this. They just test your reactions, you gotta pay a little bit of attention. Like right there, I could have attacked, but he has follow-ups to that. So realistically, you don't want to. But right there, you definitely do. Always go for the double sweep. It's probably got the worst recovery. And here it comes again. One and two. Roll attack, normal attack. I forgot to pick up my souls. Let's go fix that. Should be right back here. Yeah, there we go. And here comes the sweep again. One and two. Now we get our two hits in. 
and roll. You can get into a nice little rhythm against this guy. If you're ready for it, at least. This, and then the sweep. One, two, good old spin attack. The easiest to deal with. I guess the shield strike isn't that bad either. No, no spin this time? Fine, I see how it is. Oh, he just went straight into the spin. That was weird. Very weird. Come on, buddy. We're on a bit of a groove this time. Easy wins. Gotta watch out for that. Here comes the sweep. Swoop. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep calling it the sweep. Screw it. I think the stab, you might be able to sneak a hit in. No promises. Let's try right here. Sneak a hit. Then the tail. Nope, you can't recover fast enough. And the shield, you can definitely sneak at least one. No? Maybe not with two weapons. Roll through this. Get some heals in. Try two. I guess... Well, the shield is definitely still punishable. But I guess the moves that were punishable in the first phase become unpunishable in the second one. However, if you roll through the tail, you can get a hit in. So we roll through this and get ready for tail. No tail. Shield, however, hit every time. This, watch out for the tail. There it is. Now you get your punish. So basically everything gets extended, or at least half of his moveset gets extended by one before you want to punish it. As long as you manage your stamina correctly, this is actually quite doable. Easy peasy. Roll through that, do this. Not bad. Now we get the double swoop, some extra damage in. Pretty good. Here comes the swoop again. Let's get a couple more hits in. Come on, bud. I think he's only hit me once, and it just, no, twice, because I was testing my punishes. Now three times, because I was talking <laughs> about not getting hit too much. Here comes the shield, free punish. I don't really care for this flying stab thing that he does. Mostly because it's completely unpunishable, even if you roll into it. Which is very annoying. I'm starting to like the tail a little bit in some attacks because it allows me to get two hits instead of one. Which is quite convenient. This double sweep, pretty nice. You get a hit in here. Then you want to watch out for him doing the smaller, quicker tail attack. Really starting to get the dance going here. Okay, let's get the double sweep. Spinning time, wonderful. Get this in. Dodge? Nope, no time to dodge. Gonna roll away. Well, not roll, run. Get our heels in, and then get back to fighting. Perfect. Avoid this yet again. Come on, buddy. Oh, that's different. Stomp into tail sweep. Haven't seen that. Run, get our heel in, and get back to the fight. He's almost down. Do this, here comes the tail. Yep, knew it. And now, the nice little stab. Big tail. Get our punish in. And he's almost done for. We basically won already. It's over. Ouch. But for who? <laughs> Don't get cocky right at the end. Alright, finish this. Easy peasy. All it took was four tries. Really shouldn't have. This is one of my favorite bosses to fight, but I do it so seldomly. I guess I just wasn't ready. But this has been episode two of Elden Ring. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next episode. But for now, goodbye.